The first presentation of the day will be delivered by Jorge Torres, an academic consultant for Pearson in Mexico. His presentation is entitled, Apply the VARC Learning Styles Model uh, to Maximize the Engagement in the Hybrid Classroom. Mr. Jorge Torres Almazan holds a master's degree in leadership and management in education, bachelor's degree in international business, and a certification in English teaching as a foreign language. He has ex experience teaching English as a foreign language, TO, uh, TOEFL preparation courses, business English courses, and different subjects in management and marketing. Jorge is currently working as an academic consultant for, Pers for Pearson, Mexico. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Jorge Torres. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you for being here. I'm quite excited and thrilled uh, for participating in this amazing event. Um, this is my first time here with you guys. So um, quite excited again, quite quite uh, happy to, to, to be invited. So thank you very much for the space. Thank you very much for being here in this uh, third day. I promise we're gonna have fun. Hopefully you and I will learn together a lot of new things. And um, so yeah, let's let's get this uh, this uh, session uh, started. So the name of the session is Apply the Bark Learning Styles Model to Maximize the Engagement in the Hybrid Classroom, okay? And what well, to begin, uh, I would like to join me here on Canva Live. I'm, I really like participation and interaction between the audience and, and the speaker, which is in this case uh, myself. So I'm gonna try something something new, okay? Um, I'm going to activate a live chat here on Canva. Uh, and through this chat, we're going to be able to participate. You can do this through your cell phones, tablets, iPads, or in your laptop. Actually, uh, a small video will, will start loading here in the presentation in, in, in a moment. And while the video starts, let me activate the access code. There you are. So how can we do this? Please type in in the browser of your preference. It could be Google Chrome, um, Safari, um, if you're using an iPad or an iPhone, um, Firefox, maybe if you are in, in, in your computer, and type in Canva Live. Uh, as you're looking at, at, at in the screen. Once you get in there, uh, you're gonna need an access code, which is right there, 615576, okay? Once you activate this code, you will be able to participate here with me in the presentation. I'm going to actually copy the link, actually, here. And I'm going to paste it right here in the chat. Uh, let's see if we can get um, folks behind the screen to share this on YouTube or in the networks in which we are participating, okay? So what am I doing this so we can participate, so we can interact a little bit, so we can have a small... There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, a, an anonymous user in here. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. That's nice. Once you join, it will be nice if you can type in your 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 name, okay? Um, on the on the upper part where where the keyboard is, uh, you will be able to find a, a space to type in your name. There you go. We have in here Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Hi, another Ariel Martinez. Hello, hello. Thank you. So we are getting people to to join here on the chat. So that way we can participate. I can, I can thank you. Thank you very much for joining. And that way we can have a small interaction. Okay. So this will help us out to 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 participate, to read, to to you know get um, some um, activities between you and I. 
Uh, we have in here Melissa. Okay, great, great. Thank you, thank you very much. This is this is quite nice. Let me see why the video is not is not um, working. I don't understand why this is not uh, working. Let's see. Um, so specifically in the in, in again type uh, type in, in in the browser of your preference. Um, Claire Goodman, thank you, thank you very much for being here. Anna Laura, thank you. So in the browser of your preference, uh, type in Canva Live. Then you're gonna ask uh, to be you're going to be asked an access code six one five five seven six is the access code. Um, so you can join me here and participate with with me. Okay, so I already have some uh, uh, people here in the chat. Let's let's continue with the session. And I have some very um, important questions to solve. Let's begin this with with a small series of questions. You know, questions that um, have led mankind to controversial situations. You know, to endless debate. Um, you know, quite simple questions to be honest. But at the same time. They're not as simple as we, we we would think. Okay, so first question: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Are you a, a, a pizza lover? Do you like pineapple on your pizza or not? What do you think, guys? Is this is this a bold decision? Is this something that you, you promote? You're pro pineapple, or you are more like in, on the traditional side of of you know just leaving the pizza out of uh, you know fruits. Uh, Claire says, of course, nice. So, so I guess um, we have someone who likes pineapple on pizza. Pamela, I like it. Nice, nice. Yes, I love it. Okay, so so we have, apparently we have uh, people who like uh, pineapple on, on on pizza, right? That's that's nice. Excellent. Nice, nice. Thank you for, for your participation. Great. Um, sure, it's delicious. Nice, nice. Thank you, Miss Ana Laura. I like it once in once in a while. Okay, not always. Thank you, Miss Rosa. Okay, so not always. You know, maybe one slides, and, and and that's about it, right? Excellent, excellent. Um, as a dessert. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna take that, Miss Susie, as 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 a no. You might not want pizza on on pineapple. Uh, I'm sorry, pineapple on pizza <laughs> uh you you rather take the, the pineapple as a dessert okay nice next or cristiano ronaldo what do you think guys um which one is the best one which one is the best soccer player in in the world messi or cristiano ronaldo tough decision i have to say uh, an anonymous username uh, user sorry it says messi okay okay so we Messi takes the lead in, 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 in this case. Um, is there a different player you think? My my uh, Melissa says Cristiano. Uh, Ana Laura says Messi. Okay, it's complicated, right? I mean, both of them are quite nice. Uh, El El Vicho, of course, for me. <laughs> Miss Rosa, nice, nice. Okay, excellent. Miss Claire, a good man. I do not like soccer. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, Miss Susi Bautista Ronaldo. Okay, that's nice. Okay, great. So both both of them are great soccer players, I, I, I believe. Um, top of the league, you know, out of this world. Um, great, great uh, legends. Okay, let's go to the next question. So one song to listen for the rest of your life. Which will be that particular song you would like to listen for the less, for the rest of your life? If you if you had the opportunity to just listen one specific song every day, you know, in the mornings when you get ready or maybe at night so you can, you know, go to bed, one song for the rest of your life, which song would that be? Okay. So this one requires a little more of, you know, a little more, a little more thinking. Um, um, don't you forget about me, okay? I have not heard that song. Um, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this one, and I'm going to listen to it on throughout the day. Don't you forget about me? Okay, great, great. Okay, excellent. Thank you, thank you for 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 the for the song, uh, Mr. Isaac. My way from Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Excellent, excellent. 
Happiness Him, another song I haven't heard. Okay, let me take that, uh, uh, that screenshot. There you go. Sanar a uh, Jorge Drexler song. I love it. Okay, okay. Wow, songs I haven't I haven't heard. Thank you, Miss Pamela. Another another screenshot. Excellent. Um, Miss Claire Goodman, I cannot hold back. Survivor. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Okay. I love many songs. One could be "So Happy Together" by the by the Turtles. Excellent song. I love that song. Very good choice. Excellent. Um, mine is from the '80s. Okay, okay. Mine. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Claire. Thank you. Myself, I don't know. Everyone is it's, it's, it's quoting or, or typing in English uh, songs in English. Um, to me, uh, maybe "Clavado en un Bar" by by Mana would be my song. Uh, "Paradise" by Coldplay, excellent song, excellent choice, Miss Miss Susie. Great song. "Dancing Queen" by um, Ava, I believe. Thank you. Excellent. Great, great, great song. Excellent. Good choices. Good choices. Thank you very much. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Iris by Goo Goo Dolls and Hotel California. Great songs. Great songs. I, both of them are excellent songs. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's go to the next um, question. Favorite TV series of all time? I know this is this is going to create a debate, guys. Favorite TV series of all time? What is that one TV series that uh, you can just watch all over again and over and over and over? I, I mean, you you don't get tired of looking or of watching this particular TV series. It's me, Susie Bautista, Friends, Friends. Oh, everyone is voting for Friends and in this chat. Okay, okay, friends. <laughs> okay, so friends is taking the lead right now. The wonderful years. Oh, that that one's nice. That one, that one is nice. Excellent. Nice. The wonderful years. Excellent. Great choice, Miss Miss Rosa. Um, anyone else? To me, I think um How I Met Your Mother. It's one of those TV shows I could watch all over again. Um, I enjoy watching Friends again. Okay, okay. Uh, another TV series, probably um, The Big Bang Theory. Uh, that's one I really like as well. Um, and I didn't like the, 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 the you know, the, the end, the, the, the closing chapter of um, Game of Thrones. But in general, I, I really love Game of Thrones. Um, Smallville. Whoa, Miss Joanna. That's, uh, that's an oldie as well. And Dark. Dark, the one from Netflix, right? That's a very good series. That's a great series, actually. I really like Dark. Uh, Breaking Bad, great choice, Miss Pamela. Excellent choice. Excellent. Good job. Good job. Excellent. Thank you for participating. Don't close the chat. Um, we're going to be, you know, you're going to be typing in here. So for, for a couple of activities I have prepared, um, it's going to be important for you guys to, 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 to participate with me. Okay? So. Let's continue. Guys, uh, quick question. Um, have you ever thought of the main characteristics of, you know, teaching the, the Z generation? Um, just quick question. You can type in your answer in the chat um, on Canva. Um, how old are your students? I mean, are you, I'm, I'm assuming you're teaching right now or you're working in the classroom. So how old are, are your students? What what ages do they have? Uh, are they between 10, 15 years old, 20? Are they adults, young adults? I mean, um, let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of teaching the Z generation. Can you tell me some ideas? Uh, Miss Claire Goodman, okay, 19 to 25 years old, okay, third grade students between 8 and 10, okay, thank you, Miss Rina. Um, if you are teaching in elementary or preschool, um, we are getting to the uh, the, the alpha generation, which, which will have these characteristics plus some uh, extra ones I'm going to mention as well. Thank you. Um, they are in their 20s, okay, thank you, Miss Melissa. Uh, high school students, college students, so around 16. 18, 20, 20 years old, excellent. Different ages from 20 to 45. Okay, so your 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 teaching is Rosa different uh, generations, you know, 
some millennials, uh, some uh, um, students on the on the Z generation. Okay, excellent. They could be between 14 to 25. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Joanna. Thank you. Okay, so um, I strongly believe that um, we have to understand the, the generation and the characteristics of our students in order for us to provide a better um, a teaching experience, a better learning experience for them. Okay, so I'm going to mention um, some interesting facts about students between 10 to 23 years old, which are, you know, classified in this category, in this category, sorry, and, and, and the Generation Z. Remember, this is not me. This is data, statistic, uh, information out there on the internet. I'm going to share with you a small QR code in which you can, um, you know, you can read it. And, and 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 get more information based on on research okay so these guys are the first people to be born will on the well-known digital age right so they're digital natives okay they they have great command of technological trends and you know they usually spend a lot of hours a day probably six to ten hours connected on the internet okay so they they take a lot of time on on the internet for for them and i'm sure you you might have noticed this i hope you have noticed this uh, for them it's very important to project a, a a a digital image for them to to be active on 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 the internet on the digital networks it's uh it's very very important right um they they love uh ultra fa fast connections they don't they do not conceive the world without mobile devices without smartphones without tablets for them it's quite complicated to to go around without their their cell phone on, on, on their hand um so generation c likes immediacy um so they're again lovers of ultra fast uh, connections um which allows them to you know search and download information uh, in seconds I mean, today more than ever, information is out there for free, in different languages, different parts of the world, and um, they have access to this information in seconds. Okay, um, um, I see some uh, comments from Ms. Melissa: six to ten hours. Uh, I bet they spend more time online. Yes, yes, Ms. Melissa. Yes, totally, totally right. Um, some people now with with this. Um, you know the, the trending line on on gaming and platforms such as uh, Twitch, for example, and uh, the streamers. I mean, they, they can spend more than ten hours uh, uh, a day uh, connected and on 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 the internet. Okay, so nice. They like I said uh, that they have great access to information. Um, and if you read that access code, you can learn a little more about the, the characteristics of, of the Z generation, um, you know, the, the pros and cons of how um, these this kids, these this people on this age, on this range of age, um, work and, and feel and their main characteristics. Now, not everything is nice. I mean, um, not everything it's, it's, um, it's, it's a, a, a pro thing, you know, a, a positive char characteristic. This has made people around this age very impatient. Um, this uh, this is something very very characteristic, uh, uh, very char characteristic. Sorry of of them. Um, they have become very impatient in different aspects of of their life. They want to achieve all goals, everything in a short term, and they underestimate the result that they can achieve on the medium and the long term. So they get distracted quite easily uh, to get the attention of them. It's quite complicated. Um, and they only focus on short-term commitment. You know, they, they want things fast. And if they don't get their result um, in the short period of time, it's going to be complicated for, for, for them to continue, you know, committing to the activity, committing to the goal. Um, and this overexposure of information, of data, of images, of videos, you know, the, the, the overexposure of visual aids on the internet will make teaching 
quite complicated because we have to, you know, find ways, find new ways of engaging our students. And it's 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 quite complicated, you know, to, to surprise our students, to amaze our students. I see a, a, a comment from Claire Goodman and socially awkward. Yes, yes, for them. That, that's a very good comment, Miss, Miss Claire. Um, it's quite easy for them, easier for them to socialize through social networks, Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter. Uh, Facebook is not too much for them. Facebook is more for like millennial people, but uh, Twitch, but uh, it's easier. It's easier for them to, you know, get in touch with people through social networks than in person. If, if, if they, you know, get to, to see each other for the first time, it's, it's, it's a little awkward, like you said, Miss Claire. Yes, correct, correct. Excellent, excellent comment. Okay, so do we see this in the classroom, teachers? How can we see these characteristics in the classroom? Have you been able to notice this type of characteristics in the classroom? Um, comments, thoughts on the, on the chat. Are there any other things you might want to share with us? How can we see these characteristics in the classroom? What evidences do we have? that um, will show us that this is happening in the classroom. How can we see this? I would like to see your comments um, on the chat. Any ideas, any thoughts? So far so good? I don't see any comments on the chat, okay. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Melissa. Yes, that's that's true. Um, we sh usually, we get to 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 um, to see students get distracted very very fast. Um, if you are teaching on site, you might have some extra control within the classroom. But if you're teaching online, it's very very easy for them to get distracted. I mean, they they can get the cell phone like every two seconds, um, a message, a video, an alert on the, on, on, on the iPad, on, on the tablet. I mean, it's quite easy for them to get distracted if we don't focus on uh, getting, getting them engaged, right? Uh, students with, um, getting some, uh, t uh, some comments in here. Thank you. Uh, their attention, they get, Get distracted easily. They're uh, they engage by participating online. Yes, yes, Miss Melissa. We're going to talk a little. Um, it's very limited. Yes, uh, they try to do the activities very quickly. Yes, they want to you know finish everything like, as fast as possible. They don't get con too concentrated on the result, but you know on, on on reaching the goal, which is finishing. Right, students with anything they get. With anything, they get distracted, even with things they don't call, uh, that they don't call the attention. Correct, correct. Yes, they seem to be absent-minded in sessions, and I teach virtually. Thank you, thank you. All those happen. Okay, thank you. They have a lot of virtual friends. Yes, yes. So if you're teaching online, this is this is something that you will be able to, to see. Excellent. Let's continue. So now, let me talk a little bit about the uh, VARC model. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, and uh, well, the VARC learning styles method um, is a popular framework. I, I think you have heard of it before. Um, and this method creates, you know, ca categories in, in different learning uh, preferences based on um, well, different ways of approaches according to our preferences. The method was developed by uh, Neil Fleming around 1987, okay? And he had the idea of helping people by discovering what their learning styles and preferences were. So Fleming, he was a teacher. He noticed that um, students in, in, in his classes had different abilities, characteristics, and that the traditional teaching methods did not always effectively um, worked on, on, on his students. And he realized that by recognizing and arranging and accommodating different learning preferences, uh, well, he could improve the learning approach, the learning outcome for the, the students. So with this, he created the VARC model. 
Um, and he drew upon existing research. I mean, theories relating, related to learning styles, you know, cognitive psychology, um, information processing. I mean, this is not something new per se. You know, the, the, he built upon other ideas, similar ideas uh, on, on this. So Fleming, Fleming's goal was to provide a simple and practical framework that educators and learners could use to understand the, the learning style. So he believed that by recognizing our own personal learning styles and helping our students to recognize their own personal learning preferences, we could tailor uh, a study method and engage in a more effective learning uh, process, okay? So he developed a questionnaire, uh, a series of questions that would allow the students to, to discover this. Now, again, there, there are some other theorists and authors out there um, on this particular topic. The, the um, multiple intelligences could be one of those by um, Howard Gardner, I think it's the name of the author. Um, some concepts are actually similar to, 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 to me. When I saw this particular uh, uh, style, uh, it made a lot of sense to me, especially because it's simple, it's friendly, and I think it's effective when we see this in the classroom, okay? Um, so I think it's worth sharing with, 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 uh, with you guys. Um, in here, you will be able to, to, to learn more about the, the VARC learning uh, model style. Um, so this one is divided into four uh, different categories. What is VARC? Great question. Um, uh, visual category, auditory cat category, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. And if you can see it right here, we have VARC, okay? That's the name of the, of the model. The, uh, the model represents four different approaches, four different learning styles, uh, according to Neil Fleming. And that QR code right there on the presentation will take you to the official VARC page. It has, um, and, and now in these times, you will be able to visualize how this is applied on sports, for example. Um, this model is being applied to, on, on how we can help athletes develop their um, training sessions according to their preferences. Um, on uh, special education with, with people with different abilities uh, as well. I mean, there are different branches now with the BARC uh, learning style model. Okay, so uh, for preferences, uh, the visual learning, and here people learn best by seeing, you know, graphic displays such as um, charts, diagrams, illustrations, handouts, uh, videos are helpful, and 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 and, and these ones, you know, develop tools to to learn uh, according to this particular um, learning style. Then we have the auditory, and here people learn best by listening, hearing the information. Um, this th these people tend to to create a, a a great deal out of you know lectures. They they like to be in on 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 sessions in which the the presenter is speaking and 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 you know they're very good at remembering things uh i believe myself i'm i'm one of these guys i really like when i get to listen the other one speaking i really like that part then we have the reading and writing uh section in which you know learners uh, they like to read they like to write they work by you know creating notes uh, i don't know if you have noticed this Type of students are very, very good. No, very, very good students writing and developing uh, essays and 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 concept maps, and, and they're quite good readers, eager readers, and 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 they're very good when we have to display words in a text, right? And then we have the kinesthetic people, learners that you know are better learning by experiencing, you know, doing things, hands-on experience. It's it's the thing for for them now. Um, new authors. I'm going to tell you the both sides of the coin. So new authors suggest that the original method is not quite suitable for these new generations. Um, new generations might not take full advantage of of this. 
because of the characteristics they have as a generation, okay? Some authors have suggested that they even question and criticize actually this theory because well, they believe that labeling the student approach or preference will compromise the actual learn, uh, process of learning on, on, on him. And some other authors consider that combining two learning styles at the moment of teaching simultaneously, we can increase the experience, the attention, and therefore the engagement. This is what I wanted to focus on. How these authors suggest we can combine two learning styles simultaneously, and through this, we can create more engagement. This is what made, made a lot of sense to me, specifically when we are working in an online um, uh, session. Miss Angie, uh, Mr. Tony, I did not know it was the name, but I wanted to develop a workshop for parents since our preschool. Yes, Miss Angie, the, the QR code, I, this QR code will give you a lot of information on, on Miss on, on the VARC model. I think you're going to, um, the QR code for more info bar seems to be too small. Oh, Miss Laura, um, give me a minute. Give me a minute. At the end, I will, I will copy the, the, the link and we'll paste it on the chat. Is that okay? So we can, so we can see the, uh, the information. I can share this with you at, at the end. For sure. For sure. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. L let me continue. Let me continue with some of the, um, examples. So, this is what we want to avoid. Again, I don't want to see, we don't want to see on, on our um, session, on our classes, either online or on-site, students, you know, bored, uh, not engaged, you know, distracted, you know. I, I think we can notice this. So we the, the main objective in here is to create engagement. So. Today, I brought a couple of activities, okay? I brought some activities in here and I'm going to ask you to participate with me. Remember, we want to create a situation in which uh, the engagement, it's, uh, it's, it's maximized, okay? So usually, most, most of our coursework out there, textbooks, um, the instructions are similar, listen, and complete the answer. Listen and repeat. Uh, read the instructions, read the text, and then answer the questions, right? So usually those are the, the instructions we're getting here. I'm going to set up two, three activities. Hopefully we have enough time. Yeah, I think we have enough time. Um, in which I'm going to modify a little bit the instructions so you can participate with me and simulate two actions or two um, uh, approaches, simult approaches simultaneously, okay? So the first example, I have a video in here. So we are going to work with adjectives, um, colors, shapes, uh, amount of, of, you know, quantities. There is, there are. So please write down in the chat everything you see in the video. For example, I'm not, I'm not displaying the video just yet, but there are two chairs on the, uh, three chairs actually on the video, right? One, two, three. I see uh, books on uh, the shelves. Uh, there is one big window right here. Okay, tell me what you see. Please tell me what you see. Focus on adjectives. Um, items, obviously, uh, nouns, if it's possible, there is, there are. Um, tell me everything you see, please, descriptions. Try to describe as fast as you can. Try to type in as fast as you can. Let's see how fast you can write. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, the video is not working now. Can you see the video? Let me try it again. Red tulips. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hmm. 
It's not working. Hold on. Let me let me try something different. Uh, there is a white sofa. Thank you, Miss Claire. Okay, give me one second. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go back to StreamYard here on the presentation. I'm going to share again, but now I'm going to share my whole screen. Let's see if this works. There you go. I think you are looking at my screen now. Uh, okay. Now you are looking again at my screen. I, I, you might not notice the change, but in in on my screen, Things are different now. Let's see if this works. Oh, teachers, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to continue. I'm sorry for this, you know, technological issues sometimes we don't control this uh and we did a test run a couple minutes ago before we started the session and everything was just working fine <laughs> i don't know what's going on okay so um the main idea in here was to provide a moment in which by looking by watching um at the same time you could write so watching and writing and it's at the same time um objects adjectives for basic levels colors shapes quantity you know helping students to develop this ability of looking and writing looking and writing there uh, are books thank you there are chairs also light color curtains there are two sofas there is a plant thank you thank you beautiful ostrich feathers i think yes actually yeah, nice nice good observation excellent so the main idea in here is listen and write then I had another another video, another example. And in this one, I know we don't have the microphones open, but the idea is to listen, uh, sorry, to, to observe, to watch and speak. So this video doesn't have a voice, it's a volume. Uh, and the idea is to retell or put the words of both of the, of the SR, uh, work around or travel around the world and they um, visit different places and specifically in this video they are uh, talking a little bit about Mexico City you know 10 places they have visited or they visited in in Mexico City so the idea is to while they see they speak the uh, dialogues of of the video something along the lines of uh, welcome to this video thank you for being here today we are going to talk a little bit about Mexico City and the things we can do when we visit uh, the capital of this wonderful country. Later on the, on the video, um, uh, well, because of the ed edition of this video, uh, you will be able to see the Zocalo or the Trajineras in Xochimilco, a couple of restaurants. The idea is now for intermediate and advanced levels to provide an opportunity for them to speak while they're watching. So again, we are uh, using two skills in here. They're looking at something, they're watching at something and they're speaking what they're uh, seeing. The third one, I think we can we can actually do it. We I'm gonna give you th two, three minutes. Yes, we have enough time, two minutes. Um, in here, I'm going to give you time to develop a small paragraph. So I have a couple of images in here. I have a camera, an airplane, a dog, a ship, uh, a lion, mountains with a small road, and a boy. And the idea here is to provide three minutes for you to create a, a story with these images. So for example, there is a lion, uh, his name is uh, Simba, and he lived in the mountains. But one day he met a dog and the dog's name was Max. And Max and Simba got along pretty well and they wanted to do, to to get to know the world. And Max told 
uh, seem, I, you know what? I used to have a, a friend, a human friend, and his name was uh, Jorge. Three minutes, three minutes to create a uh, small paragraph. Actually, yes, let's, let's try to do this, teachers. Two minutes to create a small paragraph, very, very small, uh, by which you can, you know, use these images and, and, and type it in this and on, on the chat, okay? Use your imagination. The idea in here is to use the imagination, try to, you know, promote creativity uh, with a period of time, with a small period of time. So you, you're helping your students to watch again, you know, organize ideas, um, practice punctuation marks, um, uh, you know, writing and spelling uh, specifically in this case, it's, it's also uh, quite, quite important. Small paragraph teachers, if you can share any small paragraphs uh, on the chat, that will be, uh, that will be great. Um, here on, on my screen, we don't get any, any paragraphs yet. So the main idea is again, promote using two uh, skills at the same time, simultaneously. So students can get uh, engaged in this particular activity. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue because I'm, I'm running out of time. Hopefully you guys can, you know, type in your ideas uh, on yours or your small paragraphs on, on the chat. Um, and I will be happy to read them um, in a moment. Okay. Then I have, an, I had another example. In here, um, uh, we will practice uh, a time tense, present continuous. I don't know if you have seen this type of videos before. These are um, small, small clips from Mr. Bean. And usually what I like about these videos is that, um, uh, you know, you can promote typing at the moment of speaking, right? So in this case, on this particular example, I would ask students, okay, so please tell me what is happening right now. So Mr. Bean is working, Mr. Bean is uh, driving, Mr. Mr. Bean is, you know, getting dressed. There are two people uh, cooking in the kitchen. So you promote participation, again, while students are looking at something, a video, and at the same time, you are getting them into that stage of uh, getting them engaged using two skills simultaneously. Okay, so that's the main idea. Get a uh, focus on uh, the opportunity of manipulating content. Unfortunately, with because of, of, of this issue, I wasn't able to, to manipulate too much the content with you guys. But the idea is to manipulate the content, okay? And how we can manipulate the content? Digitally typing. Typing, clicking, uh, touching if you're using an, an iPad or uh, a tablet or your cell phone, you know, touching and, you know, moving the, the, the touchpad, um, fast pacing activities. Uh, the idea is to give two, three minutes on, on this so they can um, work and get into the next stage and get into the next stage and get into the next activity. Interaction with different tools. In this case, we're using Canva Live, uh, uh, which is, um, well, uh, uh, to me, it's a, a very good uh, tool uh, with animation with the opportunity of, you know, typing in uh, information on the chat. But if we can take advantage of the microphone, cameras, uh, uploading and downloading information through different tools, this could be amazing, you know? Try to focus on activities combining skills. In this case, I tried to show you examples on reading and writing, listening and speaking. Um, See, watching and writing, you know, try to combine skills. Um, this is very, very important. Thank you. I'm getting those paragraphs now. Uh, so, for example, Miss Angie uh, says, one, Once upon a time, there was a little boy who liked uh, to travel the world with his parents. One day, they made such a long trip. It was so long they took a plane and a ferry. Oh, nice, a ferry. 
And once they got there, he was able to show his pet and all dog the wonders. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as the boy walked down the path, he saw a lion in the distance. Ex excitedly, he took out his camera to capture the moment. Suddenly, a plane flew overhead, um, causing the dog walking beside him to bark loudly. Sadly, the boy missed the lion running away. Okay, nice. Um, hello. Um, Joe, last week I was able to take a trip to Mexico. I took pictures of a great ship and a uh, road. My dog flew first class with me. Excellent. You know, this is the idea, getting your students to write down, to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much teachers for, 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 for this. Excellent. So we want to focus on this. We want to focus on this type of manipulation on, on the content. Okay. Um, we want to avoid long terms of teacher talking. Um, this, this is a, a big problem for us. Uh, the idea is to focus on allowing them to do the, the talking, allowing them to do the, the manipulating stuff, activities, Focusing only on one skill could be not too engaging, you know. Um, again, we want to focus or the VARC uh, method dictates that we have to focus on two skills simultaneously. Uh, so let's try to do, let's try to do this, to do that. Now, checking activities one student at a time, even if we are on site or online, this could affect our engagement. Uh, slow pacing, it's another example. If we don't maintain the fast pacing on, on our classes, this could, you know, create um, a sense of, of, of boredom in the classroom. You know, students will not get too excited about it. And and if we are working online, if we don't get things, you know, moving in a, in a fast pace, we can lose them quite easily. Okay, so... I want to address a different, a, 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 a new, another, another important topic: investment. And this is vital, teacher, teachers. I want to talk to you about two specific things. Um, the first one: where do I invest? Now, today, I used a simple platform, Canva, with a simple chat, Canva Live. Okay, so today I was only able to interact with you through the chat. Okay. There are out there great LMS platforms which will allow you to create that interactivity. Okay, so we have to invest on platforms. We have to invest on, on LMS systems. Uh, believing that only by using Zoom or Meet or Teams, uh, we will be able to maintain the engagement on our students. I, I don't know if this is the best thing to, to go for, okay? In order for us to boost the engagement on uh, on our students and to keep them um, busy, keep them um, focused on the learning process, we have to provide different tools. Tools, uh, today I'm going to mention two specific platforms. The first one is uh, called Blink. The Blink learning platform, oh, I'm sorry for these teachers, I don't know why my videos are not working, but the Blink uh, learning platform, I don't know if you heard of this platform before, provides great opportunities for students to manipulate, create, manage, engage different content. Uh, and this platform is aligned with different publishing companies. This is not only for Pearson. Blink works with different pub publishing companies out there on the market. Um, and you have the possibility to even upload your own content in this particular um, platform. It works both offline online so you can download the material it's quite easy to to manipulate everything with uh, a tablet an iphone a cell phone an ipad um so that's what you want to look for a possibility for you to interact to manipulate books digital books to record to uh, type in to send information to receive information to upload information to download information these words, these actions are required for you to, to engage your student. The next one, it's called Pearson English Connect. It's similar to Blink. The difference is that Pearson English Connect comes with a small um, video conference engine. So within the platform, you already have a small Zoom tool. 
kind uh, type of you know similar to Zoom, similar to Google Meet. But the ebooks, for example, on Pearson English Connect are quite quite interactive. So you can record on the ebook, you can type in, in the on the ebook, you can uh, underline, you can write um, on on the book. Um, plus assign activities, look at the grade books, uh, download information. Those are words you want to work on. You, those are words you have to look for on, on, on platforms. Um, Google Classroom, it's another one. The, all the, the G Suite uh, for education on uh, with Google, it's quite wonderful. Similar tools. Similar tools are those which platforms. So Blink, Pearson English Connect, Google um, Education or Google Classroom for for uh, Google Education uh, are some of these examples. So what are the words you have to look for in order for you to apply the VARC uh, style on the classroom? Digital interactivity, peer collaboration, assign activities, communication, reports, coding, mobile features. If you have this on the platform, if you are able to create this on the class, you're going to get students like that. You're gonna have students typing, uh, sending, taking pictures. Those are the words you have to be able to create now. If you only focus on talking to your student, it's going to be um, quite complicated, to be honest, to, 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 to maintain the engagement on, on, on the student, okay? And finally, invest in you. Um, so Jorge, my, myself, uh, you know, I didn't know this uh, because I was born in, on, on the digital age. No, no, no. I, I had to invest on taking a course, taking a webinar, you know, taking my, the time on, on, on learning how to do, use this, these tools. This is something we have to do, right? We have to invest on ourselves. We have to um, update our knowledge and, 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 and try to, to look for these opportunities um, as a way of learning for us as well. Okay, so invest in you as well. Take your time to to you know find uh, that uh, small course, that small opportunity for you to learn how to manipulate a new platform, how to use a new LMS, uh, how to you know interact with your students according to their characteristics. That's the main objective. Using our teaching style might not work with them because of their characteristics. We have to you know modify our approach in order for them to have a great learning experience okay now i promised to you the access code for um for this uh let's do something because of the time uh, we we have the time on uh, I'm, I'm on the on the edge of my time so that it's my email address jorge.torres at pearson.com uh, that's my Facebook account, and through that Facebook account, I can share. I could share with you um, my LinkedIn account, uh, Twitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, send me an email, send me a, a, a small comment on, on Facebook, if you will. Uh, hey, Jorge, could you share with with us the information on the VARC learning style? And I will be able to to do this um, uh, at any point. Okay. Thank you very much for your for your time. Thank you very much for for your participation in here. Um, thank you for, for you know, chatting with me on, on Canva Live. That QR code, it's a small survey, an evaluation survey, if you like the, the session, you can participate in there. It's totally anonymous. We, you don't have to provide a name or anything. So thank you once again. And let me go back to the session in here on StreamYard, there you go. So I don't know if you have any, any questions, doubts, comments. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so I'm going to open the the this five minutes, four minutes to to questions on on the chat. Let me look at my chat. Let me see if we have questions in here. I don't I don't see any questions at, at this point. I don't know on the other side. Um, uh, thank you, Jorge. I enjoyed your present. Thank you, thank you, Miss Sandra. Thanks a lot. Thank, thanks to you, Ms. Rosa. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you very much. Um, ah, Ms. Melissa, what's the difference between using the chat in Canva Live and the chat in Zoom or Google Chat? Oh, 
it, it's it's similar actually, Miss Melissa. If you use Zoom or Google uh, to chat, it, it's just fine. In here, I use Canva Live because on on the main um, video conference we're using, I wasn't able to to have a direct uh, contact with you. Okay, so that, that's the only difference. But Canva Live works just fine. It's similar to Zoom or, or Google, Miss Miss Melissa. Thank you. Um, I don't see any more questions in here over there. I don't know if you have questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Torres, for that an engaging and refreshing presentation. Uh, remember, dear audience, that you can share your questions in the chat. And I'm going to start with the first question. Yes. What are the challenges that 21st century teachers have in using this VARC model, in your opinion? Um, uh, in my opinion, uh, we have to believe in the system. Again, I, I, I share with you some of the other side of the coins. Some authors believe that this is not possible because of the characteristics of the students. Uh, the VARC learning styles approach, the original approach focuses only in one preference, on one learning preference. Some other authors are coming up with this idea of combining skills, which is something I strongly believe could work. If we combine skills, if we combine learning preferences, this could actually work. So I think the challenge for us is to understand how to apply, how to combine simultaneously the the the, the, the styles, the approach, and um, understanding the characteristics of our students. I mean, once again, I, I, in here we are looking at two, uh, two approaches of life, you know, people around, teachers around, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, we learned in a different way. We interact in a different way in our classrooms. And students around 5, 10, 15, 20 years old, they're learning in a different way. So we have to modify our teaching uh, approach in order for them to, to, to um, improve their learning experience. If we believe they are going to modify their approach to our teaching style, I'm not quite sure that's going to be the the, the, the correct way of, of of looking at this. We as teachers have to modify our characteristics and 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 provide a teaching experience according to our students. Excellent, uh, Mr. Torres. It is very important because you started your presentation precisely giving those characteristics of the students of the new generations. And we have to use technology to satisfy different needs. It's um, very refreshing. Uh, I see a, a question here from teacher Angie. Sorry, Correct. Uh, Mr. Have you used this combined mode with elementary students? Do you think it could work? Yes, especially I have used this on on higher ele elementary, Miss Miss Angie. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't applied this on lower elementary, first, second, third grade. Uh, but on, on higher elementary, I have, and it works. It actually works. Um, again, when, when you are able to provide simultaneously an activity that uh, uh, makes them look and, and listen, look and write, look and speak, you know, write and read, write and, 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 and observe, answer. I mean, it, it, it works. It actually really, it really works. Um, I paste on the chat, uh, the official site for the VARC learning approach. It's right there on the chat. Hopefully uh, you guys can share it on, on the other social media. And again, if you want to you know, get an extra information, you can always send an, an email to me and, and I will be happy to share this with you guys. Finally, Mr. Torres, can you tell us about, um, if, about the pricing of those LMS? Blame pricing. Person. Um, okay, I, I, I mentioned that we have to invest, right? Uh, I know that I work at Pearson. That's why I, sh I share with you another platform, Blink. It's a different platform outside of the of Pearson as a publishing company. Uh, in general, I think we have to invest on tools that will allow us to interact better with our students. Now, I think we have to be smart about or, or, or intelligent about how we can look at those 
tools, LMS uh, systems. There are a lot of different products out there, Pearson included, that will uh, include, you know, they will embed the platform within the textbook. So for example, Pearson, I'm going to speak about Pearson because that's where I work. Um, most, 95% of our, of our catalog um, includes a, a, an LMS, a platform, digital tools, an app, uh, eBooks with the courseware. So those are the things that you have to be looking out there. If I'm going to buy an, a courseware, if I'm going to apply a model or a, 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 a teaching methodology on a book, besides the content, what else is giving me to, to maximize the interaction with my students? Is it giving me an app, um, digital resources, uh, the possibility of a platform, uh, a system in which I can... Um, grade or assign activities. Those are the things you have to be looking for when, whenever you want to apply uh, or, or whenever you want to, to buy a new courseware. If you think of this uh, or if you have this on in your mind whenever you look for a, for a courseware, I'm sure you're going to have very good tools, great LMS out there. Um, talking about Pearson English Connect, a lot of our products are aligned to this platform or with My English Lab or with Pearson English Portal, which are three of our platforms that allow you to engage your student in a digital way. Thank you very much, Mr. Torres, for your presentation and such useful insights into this topic. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thanks for the space.